everybody to the anatomist origin of Battle Brothers with the new Of Flesh and Faith DLC that came out March 10th, 2022. It is a free DLC, so if you own Battle Brothers, you already have it unlocked. You just got to download it. Now, this DLC came with two origins, and the first one is the Oath Takers, which you play as, like, paladins. The second one are the Anatomists, which someone I saw said looks like the guy uh, from the, the cat meme, where the, the cat and the two women are, like, yelling at each other from across the table. I thought that was really funny. So we'll be today looking at Anatomists, because that's the one I've played first. So... It's two stars, or two skulls, I mean, it's, like, kind of hard, I guess. I mean, I guess it's harder than, like, fucking New Company, but <laughs> whatever. So you start with three men and a lot of money. Um, and the, the gimmick of Anatomists is that every time you kill non-human enemies for the first time, you get a potion, which, when used on a brother, would give them a permanent buff. Now, there are a few rules with the potions. If you lose the brother you can re-get it but not if it's like a legendary thing like if you kill like um you know the idrock which is a legendary uh boss you there's only one idrock so i guess you could get it again but you can't fight the idrock again so you're kind of fucked in that way and it doesn't work on human enemies so you can't kill brigham thugs and get anything because i guess the anatomists have already done all they can on human bodies so now they got to learn how to get it from other uh other creatures so you will also never be of confident morale. That's where your two skulls comes from, is it's the downside. I don't think this is actually that bad. Um, confident morale is a... I guess it's harder to go from confident to breaking than it is from, like, um, steady to breaking. Like, I feel like having that extra step just prevents you from, like, losing those. Because if you, bre if you break from confident, you just go to steady. So that doesn't hurt you as much as the chain morale failures um, that you get when you start at steady and go downwards. Uh, but oh, I don't think it's that bad. So let's just get right into it. Um, does, random seed stuff doesn't matter. So what I think the, one of the greatest things about this origin is that the starting brothers are actually good. They're people you would want to use. Here's our flavor text. Now you can pause this if you want, but basically it's the anatomists come up to you and they say, hey, we want to study bodies and you kill people. So that makes us uh, kind of work together in a symbiotic way. And you're like, yeah, sure, fill my pockets. So you start in your map. This map, this is one of the worst maps I've ever seen. This map is actually awful. I, I hate this map. But that doesn't matter. Where are we? So you start, I guess with like, I think I'm on high. That's a good amount of money. Um, moderate food provisions with all that stuff. So let's take a look at your three brothers. You get three anatomists to start with. The first guy, uh, the, the traits are randomized, but the stars are not. So the first guy always is double, double, single. Which means he is a good hybrid. I've done some uh, anecdotal testing. We're just like restarting the origin over and over again. I think anatomists have a melee attack range of 54 to 64. That's the lowest and highest I've seen. And then they have a range skill uh, range of 42 to 51. Probably 42 to 52 if I had to guess, but I just haven't seen a 52. But we'll say 42 to 51. Their HP is pretty bad. Um, like 40 to 60 would be my guess, kind of like a cultist. Their melee defense and range defense don't seem to go between anywhere lower than 0 to 5, maybe 1 to 5. Uh, their resolve is pretty good, like 40 to 50-ish. Their initiative isn't bad either. Uh, I think it's probably about average. Um, and their stam is a little bit on the low side. Probably like 80 to 90. I don't have the hard stats. But they're pretty good overall for like just a regular background. So if you want to recruit them in-game, I would say go for it almost every time. 
But back to this hybrid guy right here. So on average, if he gets like 46, uh, like 59, that's an 89, what's that, like 89, 86 at level 11, which means he is a great hybrid. Like these are just good stats. Uh, doesn't need that much melee defense, that much stam. Probably don't need to level resolve, level HP as you need to. Um, this guy is a late game brother. Like you just start with a late game hybrid, which is awesome. Um, this second dude here, probably the weakest of the three. He gets one star melee skill, two stars hit points, three stars initiative. That's okay. That's like some kind of initiative build. Um, it's not good enough for a fencer. Like you just don't don't make a fencer out of this guy because your base initiative is too low, unless you have like quick, um, like quick and strong or something like th that or like. I don't even know, like max roll quick and and something else that gives you like uber um, initiative. So I would say probably like still take, you can still take dodge, relentless, nimble, um, overwhelm or whatever, but I wouldn't make it a fencer. I'd probably make it some other kind of like dodge nimble frontliner. You could even make, you could arguably make him a backliner. This guy will reach 85 melee skill, 88 with gifted. Um, and so, I mean, he has tiny, but let's say he didn't, and he has five melee defense. Five melee defense is pretty shit. So you could maybe get him up to a good, like, backline, like, late game backliner, or, like, early game frontline. This guy's kind of expendable. This dude, though, is a beast. He gets three stars melee defense, three stars range defense, which I think is useless, but I've <laughs> had people tell me otherwise. Um, and two stars resolve. So he's got most of the stars you need for a tank. This is a late game tank. He's got 35 base just from the stars, and he starts with a little bit. So this guy's gonna get 39. His HP is pretty fucking ass. But normally on these dudes, your resolve is fine, and you always get fours. So I'm finding that you can level up, and you'll pretty much get a late game tank every time, assuming you don't min roll. But even if you do, you have Colossus, Gifted, Fortified Mind. You can kind of buff that up. Most importantly is you have the melee defense. And you can make a low stamp tank. And that's going to be fine. So you have three good starting brothers. Um, unlike your, like, I think, uh, Beast Slayer's Origin has pretty, like, trash starting brothers. I think Cultists. Cultists is random. So a lot of people just farm Cultists for the seed. Here you're just farming for the traits. Um... Or you can rest assured that you're going to have good stars and just hope you don't get bad traits or go with whatever you want. You start with um, four of these books here. These are ledgers that basically just tell you what things you've killed. So as I said before, you get potions based on killing things. And I will put a link to a Google spreadsheet that a Redditor found. It wasn't me. I found a bit, but I just used it. This guy's got a spreadsheet. You can find it. Um, and... It'll tell you, like, oh, you've, you know, you've found wolves, nachos, and spiders. Cool, now you don't have to remember. You start with a potion like this. This is just, like, your shit meme potion. Um, plus one hit points, plus, plus one fatigue. So what's going to happen is he's at 5191. Drink this, you get sick. So you go down and stats a whole lot. But we'll just, um, we'll just go to a town here. And then we'll pass the time. Maybe there's a... Oh, I can't get rid of being sick. Is there another anatomist I can maybe roll on? Just for the the heck of it. Oh, there's an oath taker. Interesting. I mean, I actually haven't seen out there. Pardon for the interruption on this. <laughs> okay. So you... Um, you'll be sick for a little bit, and as you take more potions, you will um, be sick for a longer period of time. But you can p stack infinite amount of potions on one brother. Um, and remember, you can only have one potion of each type until you lose a brother that has that type of potion on them. So those are the two main questions. I think... Yeah, 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 yeah. The... Big one, though, is which potion, what do the potions actually do, um, which is where we get the Google spreadsheet from. So let me just wait until this guy's 
no longer sick and will prove that he yeah 52 92 cool now he's got this stupid potion that does nothing um oh just by the way the, the gear uh 40 hat nothing that's fine 70 minus 3 that's comparable to other things miasma's kind of cool this is okay armor um not great looks awesome but great this is pretty good 120 minus 6 that's really nice 100 minus 9 yeah that's fine this is like perfect nimble mail um it's not the best nimble mail in the world but it gets you your perfect 15. i'm gonna go over the uh potions that i have found and i can load my current anatomists um save i've made it to day 44 with my anatomist i streamed this run if you want to see between day 31 and 44 in five hours because that's how much progress i made from all the fights i took um, you'll see what the potions kind of look like. And so I have some in my inventory right here. Uh, so this is what they look like. Um, and you can uh, look at them like here. And then like some of the guys have them on them currently. So that's kind of how the potions look like. So I'm going to go down in order from the Redditor list. And we'll talk about them that way. So first... Um, is Alps, which, um, assuming all of the sheet is right, make you immune to nighttime effects, which is kind of useful. Um, this one isn't something that I would go out and specifically hunt Alps for, but it's not bad. Um, good for a ranged character. I wouldn't put this on a melee dude ever, but, you know. Um, ancient Priests give you that you cannot be reduced to fleeing you can never flee it you can only go breaking this is amazing um this is something that you would put on like your northern monolith tank like if you're thinking if this is monolith you start your dudes here you run a lot of them to your right and then one guy typically the strategy is you send one guy north to tank like 15 dudes up here but then eventually he dies because they'll go like fleeing or something so if he physically can't flee that's amazing so that's where that would be really good for. Probably also good on another kind of tank. If you have dire wolves, I believe I have this one in my inventory. Yeah. Attacks that miss have 50% of their attack cost refunded. So my first question is like, how do you, if you AOE, how does that work? This guy's Google sheet says that if you use a, an AOE, it only counts the last attack. So like this three headed flail would count the last one. Um, I don't really know how that's going to work. Like, seems kind of weird. It'll probably work itself out, um, and we'll see. But this is okay. Would I put this on? I'm not sure. Something that, if you have, like, an, like a handgun, maybe. Um, oh, no, fire handgun doesn't actually give you a lot. doesn't cost a lot of stem. Maybe, like, like, a sword lance dude who does a lot of AoEs. Or, like, if you ever want to use two-handed flails or two-handed axes with their AoE or, or, or just like a hammer with its AoE. Um, something really fatigue intensive, maybe an orc weapon uh, would be really good. Don't really know, uh, but this is a cool potion. Next is Fallen Heroes, which is different than zombies. Fallen Heroes, you accumulate no fatigue from enemy attacks, whether they hit or miss. This is for, perfect for a tank. Um, I, would on, I would really only use this on a tank. Tanks accumulate like a low stam tank. This guy right here, he's got like 44 stam. This is my the, the anatomist. And so if you get swung on in this game, you take two fatigue. If you get swung on and hit, you take five. If you get hit from a mace, it's like 10 or 15. So if you don't accumulate that, your tank will actually save a lot of stam in the meantime, which means they can keep their indom up longer, their shield wall up longer. You're basically regenning an extra like 12 stam per turn assuming you get swung at six times which is only three enemies swinging at you i'm thinking again at monolith probably got swung at like eight nine times in a turn at least um and some of those are going to hit you so you're probably saving like 20 stam with that that's an amazing potion the next one is geists which increase your armor uh armor ignore damage your armor pen so like this has 30 percent uh, by 5%, which would, I assume, bring you to 35%. Doesn't, like, 
multiply it on top. Um, so it wouldn't for this be like, you know, 31.5% or something like that. It would just be 35. This is really good. Um, add this onto a duelist web. Add this onto your duelist or something, or add this onto your thrower. And this would be good for virtually any uh, DPS character, but I think you should maximize it on a, on a duelist. Or somebody with fearsome is what you should do, I think. Or somebody... Maybe somebody with Executioner, like an Executioner kind of duelist, that might be really good. Um, the next one is Goblins, which is what I have here. This is just uh, Skirmishers or Ambushers, so just the shitty Goblins. The action point of Footwork and Rotate um, is reduced to two action points. Not by two, as I first thought, but two, two. So it costs two AP to Footwork or Rotate. That's really nice. Um, fatigue cost is reduced by 50%. Now, I don't quite know where I would want this. I can't think of it just yet. Yeah, there's something like a, like a very aggressive kind of tank. Um, a very ag aggressive kind of rotate thing I've done. Um, it's useful again for a low stamp tank that wants to rotate without having to... Uh... That's 25. What happens if I... What happens if we pop this potion? It's 13. That means you can be a, uh, a zero stam build and you can rotate, which is really actually quite nice. Probably best on a zero stam build. A zero stam build, if you're unfamiliar, also got a fat neutral build, is a build where you accumulate 15 fatigue every turn by just like breathing. And then you only spend up to 15. So that usually means you take a, a two-handed weapon. And then with Pathfinder and Mastery, this brings you down to like 12. And Pathfinder makes it so you move about like three. So you can always move and attack every single turn for 15. Issue is you can't take shit like, um, like Indom or Rotate. Because you only ever have 15 Stam available. So with this potion, you can have that Rotate. Now, why is that kind of relevant? Because the way that you play Stam Zero builds is that they're often kind of like a pseudo tank, um, is what some weird sins, who's a different Battle Brothers YouTuber um, and streamer, and is very, very good. That's what he says. It's like a half tank. So if you're a half tank that can now rotate, you're a bit more of a tank. So that's probably where I would take this. It would be really good for a Stam neutral kind of build. Like a stam neutral half tank or a, or a low stam tank that um, doesn't have a lot of fatigue to work with. Because you can always rotate every single turn. That's fantastic. Um, the footwork ability, maybe like a fencer could be something kind of nice. I'm not really sure. Uh, like in a, could be an aggressive tank. It could be a footwork tank that can always move forwards. That actually might be really good. I might, take, I might actually take footwork on a tank to try that out with this potion. Um, continuing with goblins, the next potion we have is Goblin Overseers, which increase the armor pen for bows and crossbows by 5%. That's cool. If you double that with the Geist one, I don't, I don't know if it's multiplicative or additive. I assume probably additive. Um, good for crossbows. If you have a crossbow dude, I would, use, I would just, you know, pop it to him. Uh, Goblin Shamans mean that you always succeed at escaping nets, roots, and grabs, that kind of thing. So it says here on the notes that anything that says like break free, so which is like a net, um, like a crack and tentacle or, or a spider web, you'll always succeed. Um, so if you try to free somebody else, you won't always succeed. But if somebody tries to free you and you have the potion, then they'll always succeed because it's you who's always broken free. Um, who is this useful on? Again, I think probably tanks, I think, because um, you're like 95 melee skill brother, or you're 85 melee skill brother, likely going to break out anyway. People that suffer from uh, nets and roots and shit are uh, low melee attack tanks or ranged attack characters that can't always get out, which is why I usually give my goblin trophy to a tank, so he doesn't have to worry about it. But that's what I would do with this. Um... The next one is Hexen. I did a horrible fight. <laughs> um, I was woefully underprepared, woefully underexperienced in fighting Hexen on the stream on this campaign to get the Hexen potion, um, which reflects 100% of HP damage back to the attacker, which is a great meme. 
Um, trying to think of how I can just build somebody to have like 130 HP and just like full send him out a unit and then have that guy kill himself. It would be so funny. But I don't quite, I don't know how quite how to make it like better. Um, don't throw it on somebody who's nimble because it would just get less value out of it. If you can somehow, like this is a good passive. I don't quite know why you would want this. Like you won't normally get this. Maybe you can cheese with fearsome. But if you have fearsome and you reflect that one HP damage back, maybe this could work with nimble. Um, I don't. I don't really know. There's something in there though. Uh, next is ancient honor guards, which makes you take less damage from piercing weapons. Um. So it's kind of like them, you take less damage from, you know, crossbows, slings, javelins, um, and slightly more, but still less from like spears and swords and pikes. Nice. Um, I would put that on a nimble bro, because things that kill nimble armor are like having eight goblin archers or eight nomad archers shoot you all the time. Pain in the ass, just take less damage. That would be super useful. Next is Hyenas, which I very unfortunately could not find. Despite my extensive trips all over the desert, I could not find Hyenas. Um, they give you uh, half damage from bleed. Perfect for a nimble dude. Um, probably not a nimble tank. Maybe a nimble tank, but I'm thinking maybe just like a nimble frontliner that has less armor and thus is more likely to take that kind of bleed. Um... Where is the... I have another one. Oh, I can't remember what potion it is. Let me try and find it. Mm. Oh, it's the spider... The spider one. Yeah, where is it? Who has my spider poison? Spider potion. This guy, yeah. Makes you immune to poison effects. Um, So this coupled with... The last one means you have no poison, half bleed... Which means you kind of don't need to be resilient. You can kind of get a free resilient off somebody. Or half of a resilient. Which is good for a lot of nimble dudes overall. So that's kind of nice. That's like a free perk. But going back down in order. We have the Ifrit potion. Um, which I gave to this tank here. For 20 extra points of natural armor. Awesome. Awesome armor. Let me see. Yeah, here you go. It's 20 head, 20 body. So this could be really good if you have like something like this. Where you want to have like a low stamp helmet. But you want to have a little bit of extra armor. So that's amazing. Um, helps for battle forged. I think it probably helps for nimble a little bit more. Because you're getting more value for no more stam. Which makes your nimble rage ratio stay down. I think best on a nimble tank for that very reason. Only issue is you have to fight it, uh, Ifrits, which suck. Next one is the Idrog, which gives you a 50% chance to re to resist status effects. So, like, someone's going to daze you, 50% chance it doesn't work. Awesome. Um, probably put that on a really good DPS character. Someone that can't be, um, you know, dis you don't want them to be disarmed, you don't want them to be staggered or stunned. There's a lot of good things there. Probably not on tank. But, I don't know. Following is the Kraken. Good luck. If at this point you've already won the game. You get 50 hit points. Uh, some nimble bro. Either some nimble bro um, for obscene amounts of hit points. Or, you don't have to take Colossus on somebody. You get a free perk point back. Because 50 HP is infinitely better than Colossus. Don't even have to level HP. Uh, you could somehow make a new bro start him at 50 get him to 100 um and you take all those extra points that you put into hp put into something else so a, a nimble something maybe i don't really know uh, your lindworm potion makes you take hp damage um well it causes hp damage to enemies like with the lindworm acid effect so some kind of uh frontliner probably someone that would take a lot of heat Maybe not. I think probably not a tank. I don't know if that would do a whole lot. Uh, just some other frontliner. It's probably the best. Uh, there's the lore keeper, who is the boss of the sunken library. Who, if you kill them, 
um, you get like a Phoenix re revive. Once per battle, you'll upon dying, you'll instead survive and regain full health. Awesome. You know, put it on your lone wolf. I'm oh, sorry, you're on anatomous origin. Put it on somebody you care about. Um, following is the Nacho one, which I think I've also put on this guy here. Yeah. Makes you reduce the time it takes to heal from any injury by a day. That's fine. Um, I don't care that much about that. Like, it's good to have. It's just like a nice passive to put on somebody, but it's not something that's super useful. Uh, the Necromancer one. Where did I, who did I put my Necromancer one on? I think it's on my hybrid. Um, you get 20% experience gain. That's cool. Uh, maybe you, maybe you save that for a guy you're trying to power level. I don't know. That's, that's a nice potion to have. Um, the Necro Savant potion makes you heal for a quarter of the HP damage that you inflict against adjacent enemies that, you know, have blood, of course. That's cool. Um, very helpful for nimble bros, like a nimble duelist. Would love this because you'll always do the HP damage with, with Duelist um, and you'll get some of that back. So that would be really good. If you can couple that with like a regen, um, maybe like a Nimble Forged Idrock, that would be a killer kind of thing. Orc Berserkers I have on this guy here. I'm making Rage, which is their ability. So every time you take hit point damage, you gain plus one damage, like just flat damage. Uh, one initiative and two percent damage reduction, so that stacks. Um, so you'll just get you know like eight percent damage reduction plus four damage, plus four initiative, and it keeps going. You lose them at the end of your turn. Give this to a DPS guy, like probably a nimble DPS. I put it on this guy here because he's got pretty good initiative, moderate melee skill, so he'll he'll hit something. He doesn't have super good melee defense, so he'll probably get hit, which means he'll take that damage reduction and not die so quickly. Uh, orc Warlords give you no fatigue penalty from using orc weapons. Normally if you use an orc weapon, it has a, a minus five or a plus five um, fatigue per swing. And now you don't get that, which makes orc weapons all the more better. An, an unfamed orc weapon is now just really good if you have that. Orc Warriors give you a 33% chance to resist to resist. Uh, Days, Staggered, Stunned, Pocket Sand, and Withered. I don't quite know what Withered is, guys. I'll be real with you. Um, but, yeah, I have, no idea what the, I have no idea what Withered is at this moment. But Days, Staggered, Stunned, and, and Pocket Sand, all very good. Um, probably put that on a Frontliner. Maybe put that on a Tank. I'm not too sure. Like a Nimble. Uh, actually, what I would do there... No, what I would do there is probably put it on, on, an, uh, on an initiative build. Because if you can couple this with uh, no poison, no bleed, and no day staggered, stun distracted, all of those lower your initiative. And coupled, you get like 90% of the resilient perk, which means that you um, don't lose your initiative as much. And as an initiative-centric build, not losing all your initiative is kind of key to like working. So that's what I would do. Finally, for orcs, orc young, um, which I gave to this dude here, you get plus ten percent effectiveness versus versus armor. Um, so this is eighty two one twenty seven, and now it's seventy seven one nineteen. Is it that good? Yeah, probably not. Um, Bill hooks up good armor damage. Find some guy with a two handed hammer and give it to him. That's kind of what you're doing. Um, there are the, the Rachgeist, which is another boss, which gives you more damage and you take less damage if you're below half health. That's, that's cool. We're not going to talk about that too much. Um, never really going to see that. If you fight Shrats, you become immune to knockbacks and grabs, which is half of Indom. If you have that plus a Orc Necklace, you have free Indom without ever having to use Indom. This is perfect for tanks. If you got a low stam tank, like this guy here, he never has to end Dom fucking ever with the orc necklace, which is amazing because I think for me, I need tanks that don't have to um, don't have to have all the stam, and that's kind of a problem. 
I think even better, you could get a dude like... Where is he? Uh, this dude here. He's at 27. He's going to be at like 30 or 40-ish melee defense at level 11. If you got a dude with super high melee defense and you give him... And you give him a orc necklace and this... He has Indom up, but he's still a DPS character. A fat neutral dude who has this is a full-on fucking tank, dude. He just doesn't have to have a shield. It's amazing. Um, because, again, a fat neutral with this... that You can't use Indom as fat neutral, but you can with the potion. Well, you, you don't have to with the potion, but you don't need to because you have the effects anyway. So that's what I would use this on, on like a fat neutral dude. Or a tank that doesn't want to give Indom to. I don't think it's that worth it for your DPS bros. I think it's better, yes, to min-max that tank and give your tank another free perk. Serpents here give you like a, a mini half backstabber. More chance to hit um, for every adjacent dude. That's okay. Um, honestly, this is something you could throw on a low-level dude. You throw him on a low-level guy and he dies and then you just fight serpents later and you get it back. This is okay. Is it an amazing potion? Not really. Um, but th free extra melee skill has never hurt. But maybe on a pole arm is where you would want this. If you're fighting Ancient Undead, that's not an honor guard, you'll get um, the cost of shield wall reduced by 25%. Again, this would just be a another tank. Um, a tank with iron lungs and this. Uh, what's 25%? So that's 5, that's 15. You could shield wall every turn. This is how you make the infinite fucking um, black monolith tank. You have Indom up with anti-stun, except for the damage reduction. I guess you don't have the damage reduction. But, oh well. Um, you get anti-stun, anti-knockback, everything else, and you just shield wall for 15. You're a fat neutral tank. Um, amazing. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> if you have Iron Lungs, that's plus three, so you're at 18. Second Wind Potion is not three, it's like 21. Um, if you have like a minus three shield, you're at like tw like 12 or 10 or something. It's ridiculous. Um, and then you're shield walling and gaining Stam every turn. How amazing is that? Uh, unholds, this is another one I fought. I fought Unholds with that Hexen fight I mentioned. They give you a regen of 10 HP each turn, which is like the Idrock armor. This is great, coupled with um, a lot of the other potions that give you HP back on Nimble Dudes. This is good. Again, good for a tank. Um, free Idrock armor on a Nimble Tank, if you want a Nimble Tank to tank the top. Um, I already mentioned the Webneck Poison. Or the Web... Yep, Webneck. Yep, got him. Um, and finally... Um, Injuries, injuries, injuries on the wider ganger. Where is that? This dude? Oh, it's one of these dudes. Ah, it's this guy here. Uh, the wider ganger gives you like leathery skin, um, which means you are less likely to be injured. Um, we have the math here. If you have iron jaw, it requires you to take 41% of your max HP to receive a, sm a light injury. That's never going to happen if you're a nimble. A nimble guy with this and iron jaw, never going to happen. If you don't have Iron Jaw, you take 33% of your HP to receive a light injury, and 66% um, to receive a, a heavy injury. So those are all the potions in the game, um, according to this Google Doc, and I assume he like mined the code or something for that. I mean, that's basically the Anonymous Origin. How do I feel about it overall? I think this is probably my, this could be my favorite Origin, like, like totally, like out of the whole game because. You start with three quality bros. This is this guy at level seven. Um, he has gifted. This guy, like I said, he's not that great. Um, this dude's pretty good though. He is currently lost 25% melee defense. So think that he is like a lot better than this. Um, and then you have this guy here. This is really good. Overall, and, like, these aren't even like groomed traits. Like this guy's got greedy and survivor, survivor, fearless, and uh, quick and sure footing. I mean, I guess they're, they're, they're good, but they're not like amazing. Um, so three good starting bros. I don't really care about confident that much. I think a lot of these potions can get you free perks, which I think more than makes up for 
confident. Hey, if you have a free perk, just take fucking Fortified Mind, and now you have a better chance of not being breaking anyway. Um, yeah, you lose out on those stat points from not being confident, but I think overall this is a great origin. I think this is actually quite uh, quite an easy origin. Maybe it's still two stars because you have the drawback, but overall I would not consider this to be very hard. If you're looking for a, a new fun kind of collect them all way to play Battle Brothers, this is the origin for you, I think. Um, how I would recommend playing, I would make that tank, make that hybrid, make that early front line. Uh, probably collect. Don't you have to be you have to be ready to just go exploring. Um, fight your beasts, fight your undead early. Uh, fighting goblins first as well, if you want to make that fat neutral dude. There's a lot of things you can do, um, and I think you have to, and being patient is a way to slow your run in a really negative way, because this run values exploration. So maybe get some retinue that supplies refer uh, exploration as well and just hit the road. I think, um, I haven't played the Oath Takers, but I think I'm, I actually might like this more than the Oath Takers, I'm not sure. But speaking of that, I will be coming out with an Oath Takers video in the next, um, few days, three days-ish, as I get a chance to play the run for myself for a few hours. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you guys soon. I'll be streaming some of Flesh and Faith, um, in the upcoming week, so if you want to watch me play live, that might be helpful for you. But I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.